verse 13. For, but we having the same spirit of faith, as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. Now when he says, we having the same spirit of faith, uh, he's presuming that his readers understand he's now quoting from a psalm, even though he, it would have been nicer if he said, you know, just like David said in Psalm 116. Uh, but he's quoting from a psalm here, and I think it would help us just to go back and look at that for a second. He's quoting from Psalm 116, so let's look at that for a moment. Since Paul quotes from it, he presumes his readers are familiar with it. I guess so, because he didn't even uh, give you the reference. Uh, psalm 116, let's see, uh, I want to... Uh, Oh, I don't know. Uh, let's just start at the beginning. Psalm 116. It won't hurt us any. It never hurts to uh, read a little more. Psalm 116, verse 1. I love the Lord, because He hath heard my voice and my supplications. And guess what? That's not just true about David. It's true about you too. I love the Lord, because He hath heard my voice and my supplications. Because He hath inclined His ear unto me. And by the way, that's true about you too. He inclines His ear unto you. He's, he cares about what's going on with you. Therefore, will I call unto Him as long as I live. So it's okay. Just go ahead and let Him know what's, what you're dealing with. Call on Him. He, David says, I'll do that. And he says, by implication, you should too. Verse 3. The sorrows of death compassed me. The pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Now we don't know what David's talking about exactly right here. But it was bad enough that he calls it uh, sorrows of death and pains of hell. That's pretty serious trouble. I don't know what he's got going on, but, you know, it makes uh, things we deal with maybe not quite so bad in comparison. I mean, very rarely do we say, well, I've got the sorrows and de of death and the pains of hell. That's, that's kind of extreme right there. Um, n notice the next verse, verse 4. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. Always a good thing to do when the sorrows of death and the pains of hell <laughs> get hold upon you. And, and again, I'd like it better if I could say nothing bad ever happens, but see, sometimes we deal with things. But here's the answer, verse 4. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. He even tells you what he said. Verse 5. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. These are good things to keep in mind. Uh, gracious, righteous, merciful. Verse 6. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and He helped me. The Lord preserves people like me who went through some tough things and was brought low, and He helped me. Verse 7, Return unto thy rest, O my soul. Interesting, He's speaking to His own soul, presumably his, the part of Him that would be disturbed and full of anxiety and care and worry. He said, Return to your rest, and, uh, mind, heart, and emotions, um, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. Verse 8, Thou hast delivered my soul from death. See, a while ago he said that the sorrows of death got hold upon him. Now he says, after calling on the Lord, he says, You delivered me from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. You see, he's able to do those things. He says, You have delivered my soul from death, you delivered my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Verse 9, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Notice he's getting a little more encouraged now. A while ago he said the sorrows of, of uh, death and the pains of hell got hold upon me. Now he's calling on the Lord and he's, it's encouraging him a little bit here. And he says, very boldly, he says, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The reason he says that is, even though whatever he's going through, whatever got hold on him, and he said the pains of hell and the sorrows of death uh, are getting hold of me, he's now calling on the Lord and he's getting encouraged. Now he just boldly says, I don't care what gets a hold of me, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. This is very bold that he's saying here. Now here's what Paul quoted in verse 10. I believed, therefore have I spoken. I believed, therefore have I spoken. In other words, what I just said is what I believe about it. Now, to me, I imagine whatever it was David was having trouble with, probably still there, but he's not looking at that anymore. Now he's looking to the Lord. He's turned his attention away from his trouble and he's looking at the Lord and it encouraged him to such a point that now he believes something. Even though we don't know what trouble he was having here. He doesn't specify. Whatever he called the sorrows of death and the pains of hell. As he begins to call on the Lord, he begins to get encouraged. And now he says, I believe and therefore have I spoken. What did you believe? You know what? He says, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. That's what I believe. 
even though the circumstances may not have seemed to change yet, says, I'm just going to stand up and I'm calling on the Lord and I'm just going to walk for the Lord in the land of the Lord. That's what I believe and that's what I say. That's what he's saying here. So now go back to Paul. That's what he's quoting from. And I, I'm guessing when he quoted this, he presumed some of his listeners might have been familiar with that psalm that David said. Now Paul is sort of comparing himself to a similar situation, verse 13. 2 Corinthians 4.13 We having the same spirit of faith. In other words, same thing as David. According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. Same thing he said, we also believe and therefore speak. You see, David went through some trouble, but he encouraged himself by calling on the Lord. And then he said, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. We, um, we have the same spirit of faith, and so we believe and therefore we speak. Um, verse 14 knowing that He which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. In other words, we know this, that He raised Jesus from the dead and He's able to raise us up too. That's kind of the bottom line of it. We know He's got that much power. Verse 15, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Look at verse 16. For which cause we faint not. Now remember, that's how He started the chapter. We don't give up. We don't cave in. Here's why we don't faint, we don't give up, we don't cave in. For though our outward man perish or is decaying, the inward man is renewed day by day. He's saying, you know, I'm, I am not a body, I am a spirit, I am living on the inside of this body. And though this body might be growing older, and this body might be buffeted, and this body might face a lot of difficulties and troubles, so nevertheless, there's something that's incorruptible on the inside. The inward man is renewed day by day, infused with strength is what he said before. I can do everything through Christ which infuses me with strength constantly. That's what we said. Verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Notice as he has shifted his attention away from all the trouble to the one who is bigger than the trouble, to Jesus and, and what he does on the inside of us. Now he says, our light affliction. Now he's just got through talking about some pretty big things. He was talking about being persecuted and being troubled on every side and distressed and all those different things. And he says, now that's, you know what, really, I, I'm going to call that a light affliction. Uh, and it's only for a moment. And he says, it works for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Here's the key thought. This is what I want all that to get to this. Verse 18. While we look, see, it's, it's about what we focus our attention on, what we focus our minds and our hearts on. He says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. Now the word temporal means changeable. It means temporary. It means subject to change. That's literally what it means. The things which are seen are, are changeable, temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So he's recommending that we focus our minds and our hearts on what's eternal. Well, what is it that's eternal? Well, Jesus is eternal. And His love for us is eternal. And what He's doing in our lives, on the inside, where He said our inward man is renewed day by day. That's eternal. Focus your hearts and your minds there and on Jesus, uh, who's, who's bigger than anything that you face. You know, uh, we're going to read it in just a minute, maybe. Uh, he, he's invited us to cast all of our cares on Him uh, because He's able to take care of it, <laughs> you see, and, and do something about it. 